folks, as you're coming in the room, I know I see Ms. Walker trying to get in over there. Um, if you're able to click on your name uh, in the top right hand corner of your um, screen that you can see, uh, you could actually help us out by putting in the grades of your children after your name. Um, that way, when you break out, that will be easy and right there. I will put mine here, rename Terry Moore. I'm going to tell on myself here, 24. And I think he's 36. Oh my goodness, we have a nice crowd, guys. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. I see so many here. Now, guys, the good thing for you guys to know is that as you're coming in tonight, we're not going to stay muted the whole time. And any of you who are able, now I know that a couple of you told me you would not be able to get on um, video tonight, but any of you who are able to get on video, that would be so very helpful um, because we are going to be breaking out into small breakout rooms as we go. So I want to go ahead and take this time. I see folks coming in. Um, we have more than half of the folks who are registered are here. So um, that's my cue to go ahead and get started. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Terry Moore, and I am the uh, one of the founding members of the Decatur Parents Network. I'm on the leadership team, and I see one of my other leadership team members with me tonight right now. That's Stacy Stevens. Stacy, if you want to wave at everybody. Um, I'm also, uh, for some of you who also know me, I am the executive director of Decatur Prevention Initiative as well. Um, well, to thank everyone for being here tonight, um, we can see everyone who has signed in or who's checked in. Uh, so thank you for doing that. And if you want to put your name in the chat room, and if, if that's an easier way for you to put the your name and the name of your, and the ages or grades of your children um, that will also give us some ideas of who all is with us tonight. Um, we have a very different kind of meeting for us tonight and so um, barring any glitches uh, this is a learning curve for me and I know it is for some of the rest of us too but we're actually going to be doing some breakout rooms tonight and so that is because in our past session uh, the first uh, parenting under pressure, we started hearing pa parents talk about the need to connect with other parents and to hear what was going on with other people in the community. And so we want to honor that tonight. So what we have done is we have brought back one of our panelists from part one of parenting um, under pressure. And many of you may have been with us. I know I recognize some of the names. Uh, you may have been with us for that session, but you don't have to have been at that session in order to gain from this session. But tonight we are very lucky to have with us um, Dr. Janine Janot. Um, Dr. Janot has been in the field for 25 years working with youth and families. And she is um, also the author of the book, The Disintegrating Student. And I uh, encourage you guys to look that up. That's um, very interesting. And I believe your practice is over in Fulton County? Roswell. Mm -hmm. Roswell, okay. Um, and so she is a local resource for us as well. And what we're gonna do now before we get started any further is we wanna figure out who's in the room. And to do that, we're going to take uh, and if all of you, if you're able to share your video, that would be so helpful. Um, but if you're not, we still love you. Um, and Marnie can't be with us tonight, so we're missing Marnie. And so I'm filling in. So 
So let's take a poll and see who is in the room. Michael Davis is our person, not behind the scenes, but he is our pro at this and is helping me out tonight. Um, so Michael is launching our first poll with who is with us tonight? Michael, will I see the poll? Will I get to particip participate in it? No, because you're a co-host. So okay, you, good. You that, that's fine. I just was wanting to make sure I was seeing the right thing, guys. Yes, we got 17, nine. We have nine responses right now. We're, they're coming in. And on this cold evening, we're so glad that you guys took the time to join us. Uh, we're going to try and keep this right at an hour tonight. If you have to get up and run, take a break, get something to drink. Uh, and I suspect you already know where your own uh, restroom is now. So just trot off, trot back. Um, we look forward to seeing you. Now, um, Michael, if somebody has called in, and I know we have at least one, um they won't be able to do the polling so we have 14 of the 18 who have polled do you want to go ahead and end that and show people what our results are at this point so they can see it now terry can you see it now okay so everybody we have five and under we've got all grades levels represented pretty well here tonight it looks like some of our lower elementaries are here and i have to admit to having one of a favorite in here in that um one said that uh, she had a two-year-old but she's got another one on the way so hi there tiffany and one in the belly so welcome and so that gives us an idea of who is in tonight and then we have one other question, so we'll kind of know where you're scattered around the city. So question two, Michael, are they seeing that? Yes, if you can, they just scroll down, but yes. So it shows you the different schools. As you see that uh, the majority of people are at Decatur High School. We got some at Renfro Middle School. Um, we have um, a couple at uh, Tally Street, some at Claremont, College High, Glenwood. So we're kind of all over um, Decatur and DeKalb at this point. We're all over the city. This is great. So, and some of you may see, um, as you guys are looking at the participants on the right side of your page, are any of you guys seeing anybody you know? Stacy, anybody you know on that list? Well, if you don't, guys, we are hoping to rectify that a little bit tonight. Um, our agenda tonight is that we're going to look at how we can address this whole elephant that we've got all over our house right now um, in that the challenges of parenting in an uncertain and low control conditions and that is exactly what we are in um, and so we're going to dr Janot will go through a little bit um, and then we'll break out into breakout rooms we're going to break out into breakout rooms with about five people in each room. So right now it's looking like we'll have about four rooms. Um, we would like for one person in each breakout room um, to please click in the chat room and we'll show you how to fill out a Google form. And what we're going to do with those Google forms is that way the things that your group comes up with, we will actually take all of those things that you put into the Google form and it's just a quick type and fill form, okay? Um, then we will pull all of those together for you and we will share those after the event with everyone um, so that everybody can see what's happening. So if you're not in that room, you get to know what was going on anyway. So thank you very much and um, Dr. Janot, if you want to uh, kick it off now. Sounds good. Thanks for having me back. Um, I'm anxious to uh, talk about the elephant in the room, which is 
a really bad analogy for talking about how COVID has impacted all our lives the last nine months as parents um, and, you know, impacted our kids. And if it impacts our kids, it impacts us too. So, um, oh, there we go, bringing up the slide. So um, go ahead, Michael, and put up that first slide after this one. There we go, yep, there we go. Um, so I've given this talk a couple of times already at, in both a um, public high school and a private school. And what I've taken from those talks is that this stuff pretty much hits the mark is this kinds of stuff that's weighing on our minds as parents. So I want to take a, just a couple minutes briefly before we go into a breakout room um, to talk about some specifics is kind of what it seems is on our minds as parents. What are we really worried about? And of course, with our kids, school is just right up there. Um, and particularly kids who are in virtual school, the big question is, are they even learning? So, uh, you know, and that's a, that's a really tough question to even be able, for any of us to be able to answer right now. Because um, again, we're kind of the sausage being made. So, you know, we can ask the questions, but I don't know that we know the answer. Um, particularly, I think, you know, especially as our kids get older, you know, so the younger kids, the littles are, you know, the concern is developmentally, are they getting, you know, those foundational building blocks of socialization? That's the huge piece that school provides. And then our older kids, you know, late elementary, middle school, high school, um, where as they start to get more and more, you know, independent in their work, there, you know, what I'm seeing in my coaching practice is a lot of kids falling behind, a lot of not handed ins. Um, you know, they're they're an A student, but now they're a low B C student, um, or they're I've, I've seen really high achieving kids failing right now too, and um, and a lot of those kids are in the virtual or they're in a school that's doing. Um, face to face, but they have to go virtual because of exposures and things like that. So there's a lot of inconsistency. The other piece that goes with school and beyond school is our kids are on so much, you know, their screens so much of the time. And as parents, that's very, very concerning. And, and I think it's really evident to see at any age, um, the kind of negative impact that that's having on them. So that's sort of the school piece, I think, that kind of rises to the top. The other thing is, you know, as parents, you know, we love our kids, we're, we want to protect our kids. That's just huge in our minds. So, you know, back in March, the big concern obviously was, you know, physical safety. So we had this novel virus and, you know, we all stayed home and, um, you know, we just kind of waited to learn. So we, we were having to make a lot of decisions back then. And then as school started to approach based around, you know, our comfort level, um, the level of risk we're comfortable with when it comes to our, our kids and our own families, um, physical health and safety. Uh, and along with that came some changes around um, just our, 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 our well-being. So I, I pretty sure I, it wasn't just us that developed some bad habits at the you know March and April of um, you know maybe letting hygiene slide a little bit and not eating as well, um, sleeping in, not sleeping enough. I knew a lot of families where you know the kids were staying up, you know two, three, four o'clock in the morning. Everything was just kind of messed up. Um, and maybe not getting as much exercise um, because we were staying in. So um, the health concerns is definitely an issue. Around May, May, June timeframe, I noticed a big shift in what I was hearing people being concerned about. And it was shifting from that physical safety concern to the mental health concern. So, and this is when, you know, I, I think this is about when you would say maybe the COVID fatigue started setting in for everyone. So starting to weigh, well, you know, I know I'm taking a little bit more of a risk physically, you know, and exposing myself maybe more so than I'm comfortable with, but at the same time, something has to give here. You know, my child needs to see their friends. I need to do, you know, this. So um, concerns about anxiety, depression, 
concerns about students who have ADHD and how that was impacting them, particularly kids who are virtual and trying to um, deal with all that. Um, and the other piece was um, with mental health is just that being isolated and worrying about our kids not socializing. And developmentally, that's a different concern across different ages. So, you know, the, the younger the kid, the easier that is sort of for a family to mitigate. The, the you know, elementary school kids, they, they will be fine. It, 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 it will be fine for them. The high school kids are old enough to figure ways around it and they're, they've been pretty creative and they too, I think will come out of it pretty unscathed. The, the group of kids I worry most about with socialization are like the older middle school kids. So like seventh, eighth grade and only because from a developmental standpoint, their job is to pull away from family and you know, peers are their world. So that's just a developmental time of life where you know, if you have a middle schooler, if you've known a middle schooler, you know, if you tell them as a parent something, they are surely going to check what you said against their friends. So their friends are everything. And when they don't have that, that's a little bit tricky. So, you know, those are the kids I would pay a little bit more attention to and, um, you know, to try in, in, in a way that you're comfortable with to get them as much socialization and contact with their peers as is safe. Um, they will catch up, but they will, it will, it may be more awkward for them coming out of this, you know, as they go into high school, not having, um, cause they will have missed this little developmental window. So I, my guess is it'll just continue with them. So they're just going to look a little bit different maybe in high school. And that's just me kind of projecting about that, but it's something to watch out for. Um, so that's my little kind of what I think are sort of the big things weighing on our minds as parents. So Michael, if you wanna go on to the next one, I think, there we go. Um, so Terry, do you wanna introduce what, what you want them to do in the breakout room? Okay, what we're going to do now, folks, you're still with us. I see you there. Yay. Um, what we're going to do now is we want to talk about how first, as you heard all of that stuff, um, we also know that our parent, our kids learn from their parents. And so we want to talk about first is how are you handling everything? How are you doing with your own bandwidth for handling the stress at this point? Um, are things going okay? And so Michael is going to randomly put you into a breakout room. And um, many of you have probably done breakout rooms more than we have. Um, and while you're in the breakout room, you will have five minutes and it will tell you when you're up, when the minute is almost up, it'll give you a warning and then it will send you back into the main room. We would like for one person, Michael, will they be able to see this um, when they're in the breakout room, the chat, the Google well, form? It would be good if you click the link now, um, just in case sometimes the chat will go over to your breakout room, but most of the time it does not. So, um, could we have four volunteers who are willing to unmute themselves and say you're willing to fill out one question on a Zoom on a Google form? Tiffany, are you alive and well with me over there, girl? Any way you could do one of these? Sure. <laughs> okay. Can you click on that um, Google form? Who else is uh, up for this? Um, Stacy, would you click on one? Michael, is there any way to assure that they get into different rooms? Yep. Okay. And then who else is willing to take on a Google form? This is really easy, guys. Promise. I see that Susan Camp. Thank you so much, Susan. Susan Camp is willing to take on one. So, Susan, if you'll click that link so you will have it there. And we need one other person. This really is going to be worth your while, guys. Who else is willing? Do I see anybody else? Now, this is where y'all are hiding and not showing me your faces. Um, 
Katrina, can you, I see you, thank you. I thought you might be willing to do this. I didn't want to volunteer you though. Thank you, Katrina Walker is gonna be another in another room. So these four will be in a room. And when you go into the room, I just want you to talk, introduce yourselves real briefly, and then just talk about what are you doing to handle your own stress? Now we're gonna get around to talking about the kids, but how are we balancing everything and how are we you know, taking care of ourselves so that then we can go to taking care of our kids. We ready, Michael? Yes. It's magic. And, and just a note for the recorders, um, it's going to be, we're going to do three breakout sessions and you don't submit until the very end. So just keep it, keep that link up and you'll just keep on adding notes. You'll, you'll see it once you're in there. You should be getting the invite to go to your rooms right now. There they go. Janine, look, they disappeared. How can you tell? Wait a minute. I gotta see how if you, you if you hit participants. Hold on, let me stop uh recording because right now we can pause. Michael, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, Casey, I can hear you. So I'm not sure what just happened, but the breakout room I was in, the speakers and the sound did not match up. So someone was speaking, but it was like a man speaking, but it was a voice of a female. So I have no idea what happened to mine or where I went, but I still hear them speaking and I'm back in the main room. I don't know. Then. I can't hear you. And where did they all go? Because we ended the the back. I still hear the people in the room, seven but seconds. not... Yeah. Seven seconds. Terry. Bobby, so. All right, folks, I heard there are some, did anybody else have technical issues in the breakout rooms? I, I was uh, capturing stuff and I couldn't see anybody on the call. And then, and then so I- when you get into the breakout rooms, make sure you go up and hit gallery view. Like if up in your right, left, upper uh, right-hand corner, if you have that gallery view on, you should be able to, like, if you have gallery view on, you should see all of us on the screen now. Right. Yeah. And the form opened, because. And KC had issues in our group. We, yes. could hear, we can see her, but, and hear her, but she said she couldn't hear us. That's so odd. KC actually, let me ask you a question. Did you call in on your phone? Are you the phone number? Or, or did you well, log in with the computer audio? So I, I did both. I called in with my phone, but I couldn't see, couldn't figure out how to watch it. So are then you, I muted my computer and I have my AirPods in to listen. The 404? There's a 404. Okay, so your 404 number, you were hearing the room two because that number is in room two and your video was in room one. Um, so you were here in room two's conversation, but you were in video, you were in room one. I was I, like, it's not matching. <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah, a woman's talking and I hear a man's voice. Um, I will put both of those in the same room for the second one. So you will hear and see the right people. I will fix that. And guys, the, the age of COVID and the learning curve of things, I never knew that I even wanted to learn at this point, right? Right. Um, so is anyone willing to uh, unmute, maybe a couple of you unmute and just share a, a little bit of what you heard in your room? Um, I'll, go, I'll jump in. What I heard is that structure and routine is important to people, um, but it's a struggle because for some people in the family, the parent, the child, the other child, what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for another person. Did I capture that about right? Um, and then there are issues associated with people who have to be reporting to work out of the home. And then there are issues with people who are in the home and those are kind of divergent sets of concerns. Did you meet any new people, Susan? Yes, I did. <laughs> good, good. Um, anyone else wanna share anything that you heard in your breakout room? I can share from our group. 
um, we talked a lot about just resting when we need it, need to and stepping away. Um, we realized that we can't give 100% to our kids in school. Um, we have to balance it out. Today, give them 80%, tomorrow, give them 20%, but really um, pick our battles with our little ones. Um, communicate when they need, when like say the office space, if I need an office space for work, really communicating that with my spouse that has been working. And we have one who has um, kids that can take care of themselves. So that works well for them. The daughter is back in daycare, but they're closed due to a COVID scare. Um, so she's in front of the television right now, but they're waiting for the school to open up. So that's how he's getting his balance. Okay. Okay. And did you meet some new people, Tiffany? Yes. Yes. Everybody. Okay. <laughs> Everybody was new for you. Okay, wonderful. Um, because I think it is real important right now just to get some new faces in our lives and some new names. Um, and if any of you are interested in finding out, you know, emails and stuff, please make sure you grab that in the next, in your next meeting. Um, and so now we're going to look at what we can control. We've, we've talked a lot about just what's happening in our lives. Dr. Janot, do we want to roll it over to you? Sure. So let's see. The next slide is um, me giving you not great news as parents um, because this, this is just something that I think needs to be said that, you know, as parents, and this again, this is one of those things that changes a little bit over the lifespan of our kids, but you know, we oftentimes want to be very much in control of everything, of everybody, um, meeting everybody's needs. The, the truth is that our kids are in control of certain things, and that is their eating, their sleeping, their learning, their movement, and I put bedrooms parenthetically because it doesn't fit neatly, but if you have, you know, I don't know, like a kid 10 or 12 on up, bedrooms are, can be a control thing too because it's the one place where kids will try to do it their way. You know, so if they're really messy, um, have stuff all over the place, that's stuff they might not get away with in the kitchen or the living room, but they can, they try to do it in their bedroom. So it's always, I find to be a, uh, you know, a point of um, conflict between parents and kids is keeping their bedrooms clean or keeping the bedroom the way the parent would like them to have it. So, but but from a really like 100% the kids in charge, the eating, sleeping, learning, movement, you cannot force your child to eat. You cannot force your child to fall asleep. You cannot force your child to learn something and you cannot force your child to move. Now we can do lots of things to, um, encourage that to happen. And the younger our kids are, the more, you know, quote unquote control we have in trying to get them to do those things. Um, but anybody who has, again, an older kid will really, especially when it comes to this learning piece um, where kids, sometimes they start off in elementary school, middle schools, particularly really bright kids where they don't have to try very hard learning is very, very easy. They, they don't spend a lot of time and effort. And then once they hit rigor and upper middle school and high school, um, that can be a real challenge. And then sometimes the motivation tanks and you're not seeing, um, you're not seeing them try the way that they used to. And there's an there's a issue there. So I only say that so that we really, as parents can kind of flip this and ask the question of, what do we control then? So Michael, if you wanna put the next one up. Okay, so Terry, I think we're gonna break out on this one, right? Right. So, and, and I used to always laugh with my, when my kids were very young and say, you know, you can make them sit at the table, you can't make them eat. You, know, uh, you can make them lay in bed, but you can't make them go to sleep. Um, so what we want to do here is we want to look at how are you able to help your child in the areas that you do have control over? Um, what are some things that you are doing, some tricks or tips that are working for you right now 
what are what's working what's not working share your experience because i know everybody's home is different and boy we've all been in the middle of this right now so with that if you can maybe try and record maybe three takeaways at least our reporters and michael if you want to send them to their rooms just, just for clarification real quick before you get yes started. yes we could be controlling what we can we can control what we eat you know, all the stuff about us that I said we can't control about our kids. So, you know, just to be clear, this is like, what can you, what are you doing about those, these things that you can control about yourself? Ah. Kind of starting with that. Okay. So I don't, Dr. Janot, do you want to ask them, do you want to do the process on this one? Sure. Sure. So is there, so this was talking about what, what, is, what is in your control, which is basically how you're taking care of yourself. So I'd love to hear, is there anybody who'd want to share some of the things that bubble to the surface in your breakout? I will. Susan. Um, we, I shared um, about mindfulness and how we've, how I have, I, I started doing guided meditations many years ago and, um, and in doing so I've learned a lot of techniques to help address like anxiety. And I was sharing how for the first time we left our neighborhood <laughs> this weekend and my eight year old who is on the spectrum and has sensory issues, like had sensory overload and started and had like a full blown anxiety attack while we were out. And so I was able to employ mindfulness techniques with her. She did a body scan and she told me that she learned that in her links class, which I was, you know, glad to know that they were teaching that. So it wasn't a foreign concept. And we talked through what her body was feeling and how it was how her, how her feelings were real, but it was not her reality. And the reality is that she was safe. And um, so that was something that um, was really helpful for us. And in our group, we all agreed that we've been doing nutrition pretty well, um, but we are, we do feel like um, there, we might be over, not, I, using screens too much because that balance, one of the challenges is at least for the kids our age is that like screen is a treat, but yet they're on screens all day for school and it feels unfair to not let them have like enjoyable screen time where they're just consuming and not thinking. So trying to strike that balance for them. Absolutely. Anyone else hear anything that kind of struck you or stuck with you? Well, I'll share, and it was um, Elizabeth and myself. Uh, so I have a 17 and a 20 year old and my husband and I both work outside the home. And Elizabeth and she and her husband work from home right now. And so they're with their children all the time. And I said, one of the things that's been important to us is to have family dinner every night which is something that we've done. And Elizabeth says they do it most of the time, but because they're together all the time, sometimes they just say, you could no family dinner, you know, and Elizabeth, I'm not quoting you, but you can go to your room and eat dinner or whatever. So it was just interesting to hear a different perspective from a family whose parents work outside the home to families that are, you know, both working at home and with their children all the time. So I appreciated hearing that. It was kind of about finding relief in releasing some control rather than keeping right. the same controls that we had pre-pandemic, you know, sort of adapting to where we're at now. Makes sense. Makes sense. Anyone else want to share anything? Kunle, who are you in a group with? Unmute yourself. <laughs> so I'm in a, a group with Casey, with Tiffany, and with Ashley. 
Uh, and I think actually this, we, I think we didn't get the question right. We, we were talking about how to help our children hope. Uh, so we didn't address individual, what we were doing individually. Um, one of the parents mentioned the fact that uh, her daughter is in the IB program and has a lot of work, uh, 11th grader and has quite a lot of work. So helping her just manage that is, um, has been challenging. And uh, yes, I can, I can only imagine um, for maybe some of us with younger children, the workload is not yet as intense. And so we haven't had to, to deal with that. Um, I did say that for, for my children, a little bit of structure, there's a certain bedtime by which they need to be in bed. Like you said, Terry, you, you don't have to sleep, but everything shut off and just be in bed and uh, on week, school nights. And then, uh, you know, and, and it's, it's worked pretty decently for them. Before, the, uh, before it got cold, they, they, they had um, basketball outside every, every day. So that helped as well. We're all trying to find our own way in this. That is mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to let you guys know that we appreciate you. So we're going to stop and take a break for something fun for a minute. Michael? And round and round it goes, we think. That's so cool. Stacy, you are the proud winner of a $15 Amazon gift card to be sent to you. Yay! Ooh. And guys, do know that if you stay on board, we're going to be doing some more of these towards the end. Thank you very much, Michael. So everybody likes an Amazon gift card. <laughs> Michael, did you program that beforehand to stop at Stacy's name? Um, I, I, asked, I want to reach out. I was about to say, yes, uh, Stacy owes me ten dollars of that Amazon gift card, though. Uh, that was the deal that she and I made. Made, so I'll take all your money. If you know. <laughs> well, guys, please stay on, stay on, because we are going to be doing some more flippities. Great, and all right, next slide. The uh, one before. There you go. Um, so. This is the one thing that I, I think is the really, really good news um, in talking about parenting right now, because I think we're all parenting, obviously, from a place of love, concern, um, fear, unfortunately, and we sometimes are doing things that are counterproductive with our kids, like maybe we're helping too much. Um, kind of keeping with the whole control idea, there's an Anne Lamott quote that says, help is the sunny side of control. And it, for me, at least, that really, really rings true. So a lot of times when we're helping, it is, it is driven by kind of our need for control because we want, we want, to, we want to do right by our kids. But here's the really, really good news. There is one thing that we can do as parents that is the most protective thing for our kids. And it's actually the simplest thing. And I think it's almost too simple because we think we're not doing enough if we're just doing this one thing. And the one thing is to be a warm and supportive adult in our child's life, regardless of their age. All they need is one warm, supportive adult that they can count on. And what I what I mean by that is it's, um, th there's actually research that just, just backs this up. Um, there's a, a lot of it that basically says if we are if we are there, if we unconditionally love our kids, we provide them support. And part of that is structure and routine, which a lot of you have mentioned in your breakout rooms about being, you know, important to have a have a bedtime, have study, have some rules and structure. Our kids, as much as they push back against that, they need it, they want it they appreciate it. It's part of how they feel loved and supported. So that's a huge thing for us to like keep in the forefront of our minds as parents that especially right now when so much is out of our control, so much we cannot fix for our kids, so much we can't give back to our kids that they've lost, 
we can be there for them. And that is going to be huge. And part of our job showing up for them is to model how to be a person in a situation like this. So how, how we cope is teaching them how to cope. Our kids can be very, very resilient. Um, and it's likely they will be, but they're going to be even more resilient when they see us as parents being resilient and having our ups and downs. This is a roller coaster ride. This is not, you, you have to be really good at this all the time. Mm -mm. And your kids shouldn't have to be good at it all the time either. What, what is normal right now is to see sort of this, you know, like I'm having a really good day. I'm having a really bad day. I'm having a but as long as you're coming back from those bad days, you're doing it right right now. It's normal. Um, I just wanted to say real quick about communication. That's one of the biggest things um, that we can control that will be very helpful, not just for our kids, but for our families as a whole. And the heavy lifting is kind of falls to us as parents. Um, we want to be active listeners, which means we're listening to understand and, that, and we're giving them our full attention. So really hard to do. And I think screens make it very hard to do. So we have to kind of maybe disengage from our phone, look them in the eye, listen, try to understand what they're saying, try to listen for the real emotions of what's going on. So if they're angry, maybe they're not angry. Maybe they're actually disappointed in something, but you have to kind of listen and maybe read between the lines. Empathetic listening, um, it, you know, kind of saying back to them, gosh, you know, it sounds like whatever, um, so that they know that they're being heard. One of the things that we do as parents is when our kids come to us, especially if they're upset, our instinct is to help. <laughs> um, and say, oh, well, here's what you should do, or oh, don't worry about this, or oh, whatever. We try to solve the problem that they're sharing with us. And particularly as kids get older, that is something they really do not appreciate. They want to be heard. They don't want us to solve their problem. So for us to come back and not um, just be the warm and supportive adult, say, wow, that sounds like that hurt your feelings or whatever it is to reflect back that you understood. That's what they want. Um, sometimes conversations can be a little bit tricky. So, you know, with young kids, you can start this and you can certainly do it with older kids is to have some times where you have conversations, um, you, you know, around a dinner table. Um, there's some families I've worked with who, you know, they said, you know, the kid doesn't want to talk you know, just kind of closes down, won't share, try writing to each other. So get a little notebook and write a note, put it on their pillow, have them return it to you. Um, it's kind of a safe space and it prevents that conflict that can sometimes happen in communication. Um, just because we're running out of time. Well, I'm going to skip the 90 second rule, but you can find it um, in the resources that we're going to talk about in a minute. You can find a whole little blurb about that, and particularly if you have older kids, that might be interesting. Um, structure and routine is something that we have control over in our families. You're going to have way more success uh, making, a, making routines if you're flexible and if you're getting input from everybody. So asking, you know, age appropriately, asking your kids, well, what should this look like? When should we use our phones? You know, where should we charge our phones? What should the rule be around dinner? Um, talk about it as a family and then meet up every once in a while to kind of revisit how's that working, you know, because things change in a family. Uh, so that that is stuff that's in our control. And, you know, just taking care of this stuff here that I just mentioned will go so, so, so far, so much further than some of the other stuff that we're kind of sweating over. So. Um, I think that's a, a big takeaway is, you know, just we got to show up and love our kids and give them the, the give them, I mean, our, our home should be a warm hug for them as often as possible. And we, we just need to show up as our best parenting selves as often as we can. Not every day, but as often as we can. Um, so Michael, yeah, so we're going to uh, do the last breakout room. And this is a time where you, if you want to talk about anything else, you know, we've been talking about, feel free, but this would be a great time to share um, any resources that you you know of, that you've used, um, particularly if you feel like your child has 
struggled in some area. So, um, you know, there's obviously, these are some of the signs, you know, that would suggest that maybe you would need to get some outside help. So if your child changes friendships, um, is having a lot of difficulty in school, uh, you know, angry, uh, irritable, uh, fatigue, those are the kinds of things where you certainly want to have a conversation with your child and then maybe with somebody else. So if, if anybody has um, had to deal with this, this would be a good time to share those kinds of resources. Um, and again, anything else that we've talked about tonight that you guys want to circle back on, that would be great. And this breakout room will be slightly shorter because we are getting a little bit smaller here. There went Carol. Very good, Dr. Jeanneau. Okay, welcome back everybody. Um, glad you guys were able to take a minute just to be with each other and see if anybody has any good resources that, I mean, we'll certainly get those on the sheets if anybody had some that we don't get to hear and that'll go out to you guys along with the PowerPoint presentation. But does anybody want to have a resource that they'd like to share? Leslie. She left me. There she is. Are you talking about me? Sure. I thought you were speaking. That's why I called your name. You're you you lit oh, up. No, no, no. I'm sorry. No, I, I I'm not sure of anything really. Was anything shared okay. in your group that you found particularly interesting? Um. Yeah, well, you know, it was uh, nice to have some common, you know, just realize other people are going through. Yes, through absolutely. It. So. We are not alone, folks. Uh, look around the yeah. room. Look around the room. Everybody took the time tonight because this is real and it's a struggle. And nobody's doing it perfectly, but Lord knows we're all trying. Does anybody else have anything they would like to share? Um, I, I did want to ask, like, the difficulty concentrating. You know, that's something my son has uh, mentioned. He thought he might have had that issue anyway, but, um, you know, his grades have been okay. You know, I know they could be a lot better, but, they, you know, they've always been okay. So, but he just said right now, yeah, it's hard to concentrate. Mm -hmm. I hear that all the time and low motivation. The kids just are not motivated to do school. I know I can say in our breakout group, I just, as someone also put it in there that you know, we suggested maybe sports was a way to con connect or even really anything, any type of club, Girl Scout, Boy Scouts for younger, maybe, or a running club, or I think at some point we all have to weigh the risks that we're willing to take. Um, there, it's really difficult to do some things just truly from your home. And we've gotten to the point where we're willing to risk certain things um, for their social, emotional well-being. And I, you know, I know everyone's tolerance is different. And at some point, you know, watching my personal kids struggle so much. Um, you know, I mean, you, you just have to make those decisions based on what you're most comfortable with. So for us, some of it's been sports, um, you know, do they do some virtual clubs through the school, but that's really just, I think, cause they feel like they should be doing something. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been a real struggle. I mean, our third grader is actually going to school in person. We've pulled him out of Decatur to go to private school because it was so disastrous. Um, you know, he has his own issues, but with dyslexia, it's difficult to read a screen all day if you can't read. Ah. Wow. What a struggle. And I think one of the things that, that I hope folks are hearing tonight, too, is that you are where you are. And everybody's got their own different tolerance levels. And to just at, when you're with other parents, I really appreciate the way you guys have been willing to, to hear people and just accept where they're at, even if it's different from where you're at. 
But Terry, I wanted to, sh I'd like to share something that I did and I didn't share this in my small group, but just to let, I guess you guys know, I see, looks like Kunle has already dropped off the call, but I serve on the education committee with him at Beacon Hill. And I started in my neighborhood STEAM Wednesday because we have really little kids and they need hands-on learning and engagement. And um, my oldest daughter has um, Asperger's, so she needs to practice her social skills, but we have to, but our family is being very conservative. So I start, I plan science, I, I plan a STEAM project every week and we use Wellness Wednesday for it. And we live in a small neighborhood and we in, extended it to the neighbors and masks are required. The kids come out. If parents can stick around and help, that's great. If not, then we usually have enough grownups there to help. And so it's been so great for our kids. And I've even gotten, um, and it's grown and evolved organically. We had a middle schooler show up and she was an awesome helper. So now I am talking with Beacon Hill and the Decatur Education Foundation um, and a teacher at Renfro to try to figure out how we can get this for all of our neighborhoods. Um, it'll be parent volunteer led with, you know, DEF trying to help, you know, support the cost of materials or whatever, but um, just note, like, that's something that is, that we're, that I'm doing now. And if you think that you're, you have someone in your neighborhood or if you or someone in your neighborhood would be interested in, in starting that up, um, please reach out to me. I do all the planning already anyway, so I can just send you the plan and you just, executed i guess um but Susan, our could you put your um could you put your email in the chat room yeah that's fabulous and susan if there's anything that dpi or um the parent network can do to help you with that too with supplies or whatever let us know okay thank you yeah i need to catch up with kunle i just had my call with def this morning so there's a lot but our goal is to get a site the um, a, um, get it set up and started at the at Epster Park um, when we return to school. And I feel like as long as virtual is an option, then this is going to be needed. And and if we ever go to a full, I don't. So yeah, I just think it, it just seems like it's gonna it's a need that we'll have as long as we still have people that need to be virtual or aren't comfortable being inside a building. Um, so. That's wonderful. Thank you for being such a wonderful resource for everybody. Um, and uh, have you, this is Debbie. Have you touched base with um, Chris Webb over at Science of Fun um, by any chance? Um, I have not, but two of my friends that I'm working with on this are friends with Chris. Mm -hmm. And so her name has come up um, about it. I don't know. I know she has started doing pop-ups, um, but this is, um, this was just me trying to help out my single mom friends, my dual working parent friends who's had, who's first and second graders had nothing to do on Wednesdays, you know, yeah. and now I see opportunity to engage our middle schoolers and high schoolers. Um, so everyone I've talked to about it's really excited and, um, I, I just, I see a lot of potential for it. Um, so hopefully we can, you know, get it up and running. Well, let's keep or talking. scale it up quickly, I mean. <laughs> let's, get, let's keep talking, folks, because these are some wonderful things that, you know, that we don't have to wait on the school system to do, and we don't have to wait on this agency to do or that agency to do. We have our own agency, and um, that's just absolutely wonderful. And... Um, Dr. Janot, do you have anything you want to close us out with? All, all I want to say is um, I hope everyone knows that you're, you are not alone, that your struggles are being replicated everywhere. We are all struggling. Everything is challenging right now. So um, I hope everybody has a support group, a, a network of friends, family, um, and, you know, we're going to get through this. We're going to be resilient to grownups and we're going to help our kids be resilient kids. So keep hanging in there and showing up 
every day doing the hard, hard work. And anything that we at the Parent Network can do to help you guys further group together, further network, please reach out to us through the DecaturParents.net um, and let us know what we can do uh, and how we can help you. And um, I know that uh, Carol mentioned that um, she has read uh, she got Dr. Janot's book last time as a door prize, and she just said, well worth the read, by the way, in case you guys haven't seen that. Um, and so before we do our last prizes, uh, Michael, can you put up our poll, please? And as soon as we get through these quick four questions, which we're not going to share, um, if you can do the poll, then we will do our flippity and say good night. Dr. Janot has agreed to stay a few minutes if somebody has a has a burning question that they need to ask or talk about too as well. I, I have a question for Dr. Janot, if I may. Um, I suspect that my um, <clears throat> first grader might have ADHD and it's not interfering with school yet. And, um, but I'm just trying to like, see, like I, I would love resources on trying to teach more like to help foster impulse control a little bit like she just she's so independent which I love but like but sometimes it's um not great like she'll she's just leave the house because <laughs> she wants to go play outside without telling anybody or she will get a knife out because she's ready to chop up some vegetables and she's six and she needs supervision when cutting up things. So just, I, I feel like that's what I find myself yelling at her the most about is, and I know that developmentally, like that part of the brain isn't all there yet, but like just the forgetfulness to forget okay. to ask permission to do things and stuff like that. Right. Can we can we uh, hold this for just a minute because I just saw we were already starting to lose some people and I want to hear your response to this. So what if we do this after we do the flippity? It, do you mind responding then? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because Katrina just logged off and, and Katrina needed to be in this in this mess. Okay. There we go, Michael. Susan, <laughs> yay, which Susan is this? We had two at one time and I can't see my, I'm, I've got to get rid of my poll. Here we go. Susan C, Susan C, you get a $15 gift card to Amazon, yay. And we're doing one more of this one, right? Right, correct. Okay. Flip it again. Well, the other Susan. <laughs> oh, it is the night for the S's, I'm telling you. And then because, and I want to keep her in, if y'all don't mind, uh, Michael, if we're going to do one other flippity, and that is for the gracious folks who agreed to be our reporters. And so, and round and round it goes. Stacy, I did not read. Uh, well, I'll read. Please, uh, Michael, please spin it again. It's not a fifteen dollars gift card, though. It's a different prize. Well, spin it. I don't need to win two prizes in one night. If it lands on you again, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> we're going to really worry about it at that point. <laughs> Katrina, okay, and this is somebody who I know would really appreciate this. Katrina tonight will get um, a copy of Dr. Janot's book, The Disintegrating Student. And that will be especially good for her because I know that she works with a lot of the IB program at the high school. That is the right person, right? Yes? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I want to thank you all for being here. Any of you who have to get off, you may go ahead and do so because that way we won't hold you. But Susan, I want us to pay attention to whatever you and whoever else chooses to stay in has to say. I don't want to hold Dr. Juno up too long, but maybe another five or six minutes. Also, also, we are recording this, so we will keep this part of the recording if you have to watch it later. Is okay. that right, Terry? Yes. Okay. Thank you all so much for joining us. We hope to see you again at our next event. Bye. Happy holidays. Bye. Happy holidays. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.